In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Today at the Mass, we remember uh, Barb uh, Crumrine. And today, as we enter into the fifth Sunday of Lent, uh, this is a time that uh, sometimes is described as entering Passion Tide. Uh, the final two weeks of Lent, and so one of the things we notice, of course, we're still one week away from Palm Sunday, but you notice things, uh, uh, the images covered, we see more of the purple cloth, um, so these are some of the traditions that we have that help us really focus our mind that much more intently on the Lenten mysteries that we celebrate. Let us listen to the Word of God, prepare ourselves for Jesus' passion and death, that we might pass with him also to new life. We begin by first calling to mind our sins as we seek the Lord's forgiveness. Lord Jesus, you came to reconcile us to one another and to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you heal the wounds of sin and division. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you intercede for us with the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. By your help, we beseech you, Lord our God. May we walk eagerly in that same charity with which, out of love for the world, your Son handed himself over to death. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. prophet Jeremiah. The days are coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. I will not be, it will not be like the covenant I made with their fathers the day I took them by the hand to lead them forth from the land of Egypt. For they broke my covenant, and I had to show myself their master, says the Lord. But this is the covenant I will make with the house of Israel for those days, says the Lord. I will place my law within them and write it upon their hearts. I will be their God and they shall be my people. No longer will they have need to teach their friends and relatives how to know the Lord. All from the least to the greatest shall know me, says the Lord. For I will forgive their evil doings and remember their sins no more. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our responsorial psalm, Create a clean heart in me, O Lord. Create a clean heart in me, O God. Have mercy on me, O God, in your goodness. In the greatness of your compassion, wipe out my offense. Truly, wash me from my guilt and of my sin, cleanse me. A clean heart create for me, O God, a steadfast spirit renew within me. Cast me not out from your presence, and your Holy Spirit take not from me. Give me back the joy of your salvation, and a willing spirit sustain in me. I will teach transgressors your ways, and sinners shall return to you. Second reading is a reading from the letter of the Hebrew, to the Hebrews. In the days when Christ Jesus was in the flesh, he offered prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverence. Son though he was, he learned obedience from what he suffered. And when he was made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation to all who obey him. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. I read from the Holy Gospel according to John. Some Greeks had come to worship at the Passover feast, came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and asked him, Sir, we would like to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew, then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Amen, amen, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and die, it remains just a grain of wheat. But if it dies, it produces much fruit. Whoever loses his life, whoever hates his life in this world, will preserve it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me. Where I am, there also my servant will be. The Father will honor whoever serves me. I am troubled now, yet what should I say? Father, save me from this hour? But it was for this purpose that I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it and will glorify it again. The crowd there heard it and said it was thunder. But others said an angel had spoken to him. Jesus answered and said, The voice did not come for my sake, but for yours. Now is the time of judgment in this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. When I am lifted up from the earth, I will draw everyone to myself. He said this indicating what kind of death he would die. The Gospel of the Lord. In the gospel passage, we have the very first part of what we heard today, the phrase that there were some Greeks who had come to worship at the Passover feast and they wanted to see Jesus. And that's about the last that we hear about those Greeks. So we, we never find out if they meet Jesus. We don't know what happens. So, so why is that important? And why did Jesus ignore them, it would seem? Uh, because as soon as this request is made, so some of these Greeks, so the, these could be Gentiles, uh, perhaps Gentile converts to Judaism, uh, who had uh, come for the Passover feast, and having heard about Jesus, of course Jesus had raised Lazarus from the dead and multiplied the loaves and fish, so they were curious. We want to see him. They talk to Philip, Philip talks to Andrew, Andrew goes to Jesus. Um, just as Andrew, at the very beginning of John's Gospel, brought his brother, brother Simon Peter to Jesus, and Jesus did talk to Simon Peter, but here nothing ever seems to come of it, because Jesus begins then speaking about other things. The Son of Man being glorified, the grain of wheat falling to the ground, the person who hates his life in this world so as to save it for life eternal, the hour that he has prepared for, uh, and this hour that has now finally come, a time at which, in fact, the ruler of this world will be brought to judgment. And then at the very end of the gospel today, he then speaks of being lifted up from the earth. And when he does so, then he says, I will draw everyone to myself, including, presumably, the Greeks, who at the beginning of this particular passage wanted to see Jesus. Now, why, why would this happen? Why would this passage evolve in this way? I think Jesus is speaking in, in different terms about what is about to happen. He's preparing to enter into uh, Jerusalem for the last time. He knows that his crucifixion is, is near. One might say he was perhaps preoccupied, that he was thinking so much of all of the things that he would have to endure, while well, the Greeks who wanted to see him just sort of slipped his mind. I'm not sure that that's entirely a fair way to put that. Certainly, Jesus does have his mind and his attention fixed on the past that it is to come. By going to the cross, he in fact will be that grain of wheat that will fall to the ground and die, but for what purpose? So that, in fact, it can produce much fruit. So yes, these uh, converts want to come and see Jesus. They'd like to talk with him. They'd like to meet him. But Jesus has come not just simply to talk. It's now time to do. It's now time for him to accomplish the work that in fact will be much greater than just simply meeting Jesus. Here, because of this work he is about to undertake, we can say that he is going to save them. So in fact, they can in fact encounter new life in Jesus. That's a lot better than just simply talking to him. In fact, I think we might say that there is a little bit of a temptation presented 
in here. There are these Greeks that come and they want to visit with Jesus. There's a temptation to take time with them because, you see, that would be easy. That would be much easier than the much harder work that Jesus has to do. And lest any of that distract for a moment from the real purpose of Jesus' mission here, why he has come, notice that he doesn't let anything stand in the way of that. He is focused on fulfilling the Father's will. Because this is, in fact, what will do the greatest good for Andrew and Philip and for the Greeks and the Jews and the entire world. So, in fact, he will bring that gift of salvation. So he is focused on that, on being a good servant and serving the Father's will so that the Father might glorify his name. And he would glorify his name by sending his only begotten Son so we might encounter salvation from him. This is the glory that has been revealed by the Father, the glory of an only begotten Son who comes into the world to bring life and truth. We heard all of those things from the very beginning of John's Gospel. That's all from John chapter 1. Um, and so that glory is now revealed, and the hour has come for that glory, in fact, to be revealed um, in its greatest form, and that is in the suffering Christ on the cross. So I said that it's no longer time to talk, it's now time to do. I think this is a good lesson for us as well in this Lenten season. Sometimes we kind of make plans, we say, here's what I'm going to do in Lent. Oh, wouldn't it be nice? I'll, I'll work on this, I'll work on that. Enough talking. Now is the time for us to set aside the, the good intentions to say, this is what I want to dedicate myself to. No, the time has grown short. The time is here in which we're preparing to walk those final steps with our Lord to Calvary. So in fact, yes, let us hear, uh, heed that voice of the Lord and that invitation, in fact, to follow Christ all the way. So we, that we might, in fact, accomplish in this Lenten season what we had set out to accomplish, not talking, but doing the things that we had said. One of the things that we can also say Jesus has come to do is not just simply to talk about what the gift of salvation is, but the letter to the Hebrews really shows that Jesus embodies that. It's really quite an interesting expression. It's a short second reading, but we remember that Jesus offers up prayers uh, in the flesh to the one who could save him from death, and he was heard because of his reverence, that his reverence and his obedience. And so Jesus is the Son who has learned obedience from what he suffered, and when made perfect, becomes the source of salvation to all who become obedient in him. What a strange expression that is. So how is it that Jesus can learn obedience? Does, what does Jesus need to learn if he is God and he knows everything? That's to say he is omniscient. There's no lack in Jesus' knowledge, and yet Hebrews says that Jesus learned obedience. Well, learning obedience, well, that implies that a person was, needs to learn obedience because maybe they've been disobedient, and that's not the case, because we know that about Jesus. He certainly never sinned, and, and certainly in that sense, um, never disobeyed. So he doesn't have to learn to obey, because he always obeys, and that he learns this from what he suffers. We know that he suffers. And then when made perfect, well, isn't Jesus perfect already? Jesus is the perfect Son of God. But each of these phrases, this expression that we have from the second reading, I think every one of these things, I think, really needs to be listened to very carefully. That to learn obedience, yes, we know that the Son is always obedient to the Father, and he already knows everything. But we can say that he learns obedience in this respect. He says that in the flesh, Jesus, in fact, can prove that obedience and carry that obedience, which he always practices. But he can carry it through all the way in the greatest expression of obedience possible. So we might say, I don't know if it's growing in obedience, but we can say he can learn it in the sense that he models it for us. And we, in fact, benefit not from Jesus talking merely about taking up our cross, but by seeing Jesus do it. So what Jesus gives us is more than just words, but a model for us to follow. And when made perfect, but Sometimes in that word perfect, it means it can be the opposite of imperfect, meaning something that is flawed. But perfect, to perfect something, can mean to bring it to completion. And I would suggest that's the better way to interpret that word perfect. That when he was made perfect, meaning when he had completed all of this, when he had brought to completion, to perfect completion, this act of obedience, then Jesus becomes for us the source of salvation. And that happens as he dies on the cross. Um, we can say that, in, to some extent, 
he can talk with these Greeks who want to talk to him. But how much better it is that Jesus comes, in fact, not to be distracted from his primary mission, but to fulfill that mission, this uh, task that he had come to accomplish um, for our salvation. Um, we can say also that from using the first reading from the prophet Jeremiah, what did Jeremiah say? He says, this is not like what happened in previous days when God provided the commandments, when God brought the people out of Egypt and then revealed his law to them written on stone. Instead, what will happen is that God will write that law on their hearts, that in fact he will impress upon our very hearts the law of God. So that way we no longer will have need to teach friends and relatives how to know the Lord, but we will all know the Lord. Well, how can that happen unless it's Jesus himself, not just simply telling us, here's what you should do, but in this act of showing us that, that in the flesh and through his actions, as Jesus completes this self-offering, as he brings us to salvation, as he dies on the cross, as he bears forth new fruit, as that fruit, in fact, blossoms then within the graces that are given to us, Jesus gives us a profound gift that seeing his act of love, we come to know what it truly means to obey the Father, to love the Father, to offer oneself up in obedience and in love. So that law is impressed upon our heart. It makes an impact on us. So the real gift of salvation, we can say, that is offered to those who might say, well, we're curious, we'd like to meet Jesus. No, how much better to know him and to be saved by him, to come to know Jesus as the revelation of the Father, which will be perfect, which will be brought to perfection um, in that, and consummated in that offering on the cross. And so, yes, when Jesus, in fact, is glorified, and how will that happen? When he is lifted up, lifted up on the cross. And what will happen then? Then he will draw everyone to himself. Um, one of the things that um, Jesus often told the disciples is that his mission was to the house of Israel. He went after the, the uh, lost sheep of the house of Israel, to the Jews. It's not yet time for him to minister to the Gentiles, but we can tell it's about to happen. And it will happen, actually, when uh, Jesus is, uh, dies on the cross, because he will draw everyone to himself, not just simply the descendants of Israel, not just simply the Jews, but Jews and Gentiles alike who will not just hear about Jesus, but come to know him as his law is written on their hearts. What a profound gift that is. What a profound way of thinking about that. That it is now time for the judgment of this world, when the ruler of this world will be driven out. Jesus is about to go face judgment himself. What do you mean that he will bring to judgment the ruler of the world? But this is the perspective that Jesus gives us, a wonderful perspective. Yes, Pontius Pilate, King Herod, oh sure, they'll stand in judgment over Jesus. They'll say what they'll have to say. They'll pronounce judgment over him. But it's ultimately Jesus who is passing judgment on the ruler of this world, on the evil one, and taking away from the evil one his power at this time. So no longer the ruler of the world, but Christ, who will become the king of kings, will reign in our hearts, setting us truly free, no longer being slaves of sin, slaves to the evil one, but in fact being claimed by Christ, being claimed by his obedience and his love, so we might know and love the Lord as adopted sons and daughters, as heirs to this promise of the kingdom of God. This is a profound Paschal mystery that we prepare to celebrate. Jesus reveals himself in his love to the Father and invites us into the mystery of that divine love as well. So let us be faithful in walking with our Lord to the cross. We're ready now to follow him to the end put into practice our good intentions, not just in word, but in fact, uh, in deed and in action. Let us be true to the commitments we have made. Let us love our Lord faithfully to the end as he has loved us. Let us stand as we profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, 
light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us present our prayers and petitions. Lord, hear our prayer. That the world may be your image of the law of God, written on our hearts, and so live lives great and great in that of your virtue. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we may practice compassion to those in need of getting from our resources. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. pray for the protection of our religious liberties, our freedom of conscience, and the freedoms of the Church. Saint Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the divine power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who roam throughout the world seeking the ruin of souls. Almighty and merciful God, we ask you to hear and answer these prayers that we make in faith, for we ask them through Christ our Lord. Pray, brothers and sisters, and my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Yours is a sacrifice to Him, the praise and glory of His name. Hear us, Almighty God, and having instilled in your servants the teachings of the Christian faith, graciously purify them by the working of this sacrifice. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Your Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you have given your children a sacred time for the renewing and purifying of their hearts, 
that freed from disordered affections, they may so deal with the things of this passing world as to hold rather to the things that eternally endure. And so, with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Daniel, our Bishop, and Louis's assistant bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Lamb of God.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. We pray, Almighty God, that we may always be counted among the members of the members of Christ, in whose body and blood we have communion, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The uh, word of thanks to the men's club for the fish fry uh, that took place yesterday. So it was really very well attended, and I know the food was excellent. So. Uh, uh, so much progress was made, also donations for playground, uh, the new playground system, so I know that was also very successful. This week on Wednesday evening, we have the Monsignor Rank Memorial Mass as we pray for all the faithful departed who've died uh, within the past year. And we also then on, uh, so that's Wednesday evening at 5.30. And then on Friday, as we have our normal Lenten devotions, that includes the Stations of the Cross, but we'll also um, take an opportunity to, to solemnly bless the Stations. So when we have um, new items that are uh, brought into the church, it's always good to bless them. And so we'll take uh, an extra little moment to bless them and to um, really consecrate them uh, for the purpose that they serve here in our church. So that's something a little special this week in particular. Uh, on this uh, Friday of Lent. Uh, please remember to support the parish uh, with three irregular contributions. We're appreciative of your support, both of St. Thomas Parish and St. Thomas School. Contributions can be made in the purple uh, baskets in the back of the church or online. And for those taking communion to the homebound. Almighty God, bless those who carry the body of Christ to our absent brothers and sisters. May this sacrament and our union of prayer be a source of strength for them. Through Christ our Lord, amen. amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. Bless, O Lord, your people who long for the gift of your mercy, and grant that what at your prompting they desire, they may receive by your generous gift. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God.